So you're looking for a fishing rod and you zip over to a Bass Pro Shop store and you head for the tackle department. When you get there, you're absolutely overwhelmed. Wow, <laughs> look at all those rods. What in the world do I need? You got five foot rods, five and a half, six, six and a half, seven, seven and a half, even eight foot rods, one piece, two piece rods. You even got rods like seven and a quarter, six foot ten, all different sizes. You got fiberglass, you got composite, you got graphite. You got graphite rods that show that it's made with IM5, IM6, IM7, IM8, IML, IMX. I am confused. And then you got all the actions. You got light, you got medium light, you got medium, medium heavy, heavy, fast, man. And then you've got the specialty rods, the flipping, the pitching, the jigging, the cranking, and so on. Well, believe it or not, all have their place. Well, today we're going fishing, and as we fish along, we'll be discussing many things about fishing rods in a show title, The Long and Short of It, and a whole lot more. So, let's go. Have you ever wondered why fishing rods come in all different lengths? Well, like I said, all have their place. A seven and a half foot rod will outperform a five and a half footer in some cases, and a five and a half footer will outperform a seven and a half footer in others. For now, I'd like to discuss the advantages of using a longer rod, six and a half to seven and a half feet in length. Then, as we fish along, we'll discuss the pluses and minuses of shorter rods, as well as some other interesting things about fishing rods. Oh, boy, nice. Over here. Whoa, boy. Nice fish. Oh, there, big boy. Come on here. Woo wee! Boy, oh, he's strong, funny. Come here. All right, come here. Stay off for me. Whoa! How'd it do? <laughs> Woo! Aren't you pretty? Yes, you are. You know, for years, the trend for those lengthy, long-handled poles were standard tackle for the guys that did a lot of flipping, which gave fishermen the ability to present lures at close range to bass in thick, tight cover. Well, today, more and more anglers are using them for more than just flipping. Longer rods are becoming accepted all the time as substitutes for basic five, five and a half, and six foot casting rods. Hey, boy. Hey, there, buster. Whoa. Gotcha. Gotcha. Come here. Gotcha. Gotcha. Hello. See ya. Although a fishing rod is a lever, its advantage is one of speed, but one of power. What this means is that fishing rods, depending on their length, expedite the energy of the hook setting motion. The longer rod pulls the line further with the same effort than will a shorter rod, and this will move the hook further and quicker. Simply put, you'll improve your strike-catch ratio more with a longer rod than with the standard five and a half footer. The longer rod needs to be a little stiffer too. The more the rod bends under pressure, the less energy available to move the hook. Fish is swimming as fast as he can to this boat. I didn't think, he, I think that fish knew, thought he was hooked there for a second. Oh, ho, 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 ho. 
Hold up, there, Buster. Yo, rock pile bass. Ah. Come here. Open up. Open up for me. You got it way back there, didn't you? Yeah, you did. Another plus for the added length is that it offers lots of opportunities for presenting the bait that the shorter rod doesn't. And the longer length causes the tip to travel further on the cast, resulting in longer cast. This advantage is most obvious when you're using a crankbait, simply because you'll be able to fire it out a long distance, which will allow for greater depth control. And also, if you're sitting there and you see breaking fish and you need, you know, you need to reach way out there to make a long cast, it'll make a, it'll make a big difference having that longer pole. Using a longer rod is going to take a little getting used to, but when you do try one, you're sure going to find some real advantages. Here we go. Come on, Buster. Ooh. <laughs> Look at that little tugger. Fish pull it bow. Woo! Come on back here. Alright. Come here. Come up here. There we go. Honey, little potty fun. Okay, now let me show you something. It's a known fact that you gotta feel your bait, in most cases, to fish it correctly. Most jig and worm fishermen hold their rod tip way too high of an angle. Now this is not a good position from which to set the hook. However, it does offer superior balance. At this angle, the tip generates almost no torque. It weighs nothing compared with what it would weigh in an almost horizontal position. To maximize, balance equals sensitivity. One o'clock is best for maximum feel because the rod tip weighs less than the rod tip held at the three o'clock position. Let me give you an example. A long rod, say seven, seven and a half, even eight feet held in a horizontal position could weigh more than a half ounce. But as you lift the tip into a vertical position, it eventually reaches a point where it's balanced and it weighs nothing. And that's where it's most sensitive. There you go. Boy, this fish got some weight there. Oh yeah. Woo! Buddy, look up here. Yes, sir. Wow. Big old fish. Come here, Bobby. Let me just touch you. Come here. Come here, darling. Come here, you big pretty thing. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, oh no. Woo! Buddy. He got that thing. Did he ever? Oh. That big gut on that fish. Woo! A big pretty fish. See ya. These long poles allow for longer cast, provide more leverage when fighting and landing fish, and move more line for quicker hook sets. Now the downside is longer rods are typically less accurate for casting and more difficult to transport, especially one-piece models. 
just a fish. Nice one, though. Oh, oh yeah. Where are you going, man? Come up here. Woo. Easy now. Easy. Come on up here to me. Come on up here. Come here. I got you. Yeah, I do. Sweet thing. Have you ever wondered why you're seeing more and smaller guides on casting rods and what's the purpose? Well, the reason for more and smaller guides is the more guides let the line closely match the bend of the rod as it flexes. What this does is eliminate flat spots or areas where the line touches the rod. This makes for smoother, more efficient casts and retrieves. Plus, they're lighter than larger, more traditional size guides, creating a lighter rod overall. Now let's spend a minute and talk about the grades of graphite. You know, all those manufacturers touting the type of graphite used. Well, some are marked IM5, 6, 7, IML, IMX, HSX, 54, 62, 72. What is that? It's the graphite fibers that make up the construction of fishing rods that come in a variety of grades which relate to the stiffness of the fiber and how resistant it is to stretching. This is called graphite's modulus of elasticity, where the higher the number means more resistance to stretching. The stiffer fibers in this HSX54 makes it much more responsive and sensitive because the fibers recover much quicker when bent. Also, it takes much less IM6 or HSX54 material than ordinary graphite to achieve the desired blank stiffness or action, yielding a lighter weight rod. Overall, this means that the lighter IM6 or HSX54 material will yield a rod that casts more accurately and is more sensitive. Right, right there, it's got some. Wee! Oh, that's a good one right here. <laughs> oh, mama. Oh, look here. Look, come in here. Oh, yeah. Nothing gonna get me down on my knees. Ooh, big one. Ooh. Come here, sweetie. Come on. All right, come up here, big baby. Woo! Boy, look up here. Whoa! Isn't that something? Good big stomach. Mm, mm, mm. Boy. You know, I thought when we started this show, we could cover a whole lot more than we did, but 30 minutes is mighty fast. We'll have to do more on rods at a later date. But we do hope that some of the tips we cast your way were helpful. Until next time, do me a favor, catch one for me. On a rod, I hope you enjoy using as much as the one I love using. We'll catch you next time. Woo! Boy, look up here. Whoa! Today